Hey, welcome everyone to the cockpit of November Tango. I'm flying again with James, uh, my favourite flying buddy. <laughs> and uh, today we're going to attempt to teach you how to do a zone transit. Um, I don't know about you, James, but when I was flying and when I was learning to fly, I had uh, a lot of Class D airspace around um, the airfield I was learning from. And my instructor, every time we would go close, he'll be like, you don't go beyond this point because that's controlled airspace. So for many years of being a pilot, I didn't go into controlled airspace or Class D airspace. Um, did you have a similar experience when you were learning? Or? Yeah, I think everyone gets so scared of Class D because um, they think it's really complicated, but it's actually very straightforward. You yeah. just have to learn the, the plates and uh, the VRPs and, and just listen out to really what they're saying and understand it. But um, yeah, with Farnborough sort of being more Class D now, uh, I have to do it more often because I fly more from uh, White Wolfham, so, yeah. but you just get used to it and um, you get used to the points that they uh, they tell you. Um, so when it gets familiar, it's fairly easy to be honest. Yeah. But today we're going to go into uh, Cardiff, so it's a bit of a, a maze because we've got to go <laughs> Bristol and then we've got to go on to uh, over to Cardiff from there. So James, uh, maybe some top tips for guys, because I know I learn a lot from watching YouTube videos of doing, doing zone transit, what to do. So. Um, what kind, of, what kind of tips would you give to, to pilots who are a little bit nervous uh, about doing their first zone transit? Um, what kind of advice can, can you give to them? Um, I would say the first thing to do is probably watch a couple of videos online of people actually doing the zone transit. Yeah, that where, particular where, one. At that, that particular to, yeah. airfield where you're yeah. going to go. Yeah, and definitely. just listen out to what they're saying and the, you know, how, how sort of the, the conversation flows uh, to get an understanding of, sort of how it goes. Um, and then what I would say is, is really sort of study, study the plate. You know, look at the plate, look at, you know, the, the visual reference points. And then the visual reference points are pretty much where they're going to send you. They don't always send you that. Sometimes they will say, you know, go east of the airfield. Uh, but a lot of the time they are using those plates. Sometimes they simplify it, sometimes they don't. But usually they do use that. Um, so just understand that. Um, the other thing I've done, I've, I've got the actual... Uh, plate up here in the actual diagram of the VRPs. Perfect. So what I do from there is when they tell me where to go, um, I basically just number the VRPs. So it'll be like number one, number two, because obviously that's the, the sequence. So that's what I do, or basically I note down um, anything else they tell me. Perfect. That's, that's a really good tip, James. Um, for me, what I, what I like to say to people is, you know, just plan it out in your mind. Because you can kind of know what the conversation is going to be. Um, you can also normally listen to the ATIS so you know what runway they're using, which way they'll send you. So just have a bit of a plan in, in your head about what you're going to say and what their response might be and what you're going to respond to that. Because that will give you a bit of confidence. Because I think, I don't know about you, but I get a little bit flustered when ATC say something to me which I'm not expecting. And then you're kind of like, oh, what, what did they just say? Um, so that's one of my tips. And also being confident on the radio, I think, makes a big difference whether they're going to let you through or not. Um, I think confidence on the radio doesn't necessarily mean you're a better pilot in terms of flying, but for ATC, that's all they've got to go on. So if you're a little bit nervous or um, you're not really sure what you're talking about, they may refuse as drone transit. Yeah, that's right. And the other thing I'd say is, uh, you know, also don't be scared to actually tell them the route that you want. Yeah. Um, so. You know, I've done that with Farber a couple of times. I've told them exactly which one I want because I know kind of which way they're going to route me. Yeah. And, um, you know, they're not, they're not per se to say no to that. So I'd say uh, definitely um, have that in your back pocket if you want to try that once you get a bit more confident. Definitely, I think now's a good time because there's a lot less commercial traffic. So these places are a lot less busy. I mean, um, we did a Luton Zone Transit last year, which you can see the video of too. Um, done London Control, done Gatwick, Stansted, so we've done all of the major ones in the south, we're doing Bristol today, um, it's very straightforward actually, it's, it's sometimes it's easier to go through than to go around, you save a few minutes. Yeah, definitely, and, and you know, these controllers are there to help, you know, they don't want to put obstacles in the way, um, you know, it can get um, quite difficult when it's quite busy, um, yeah. but if it's busy, usually just hold you anyway. Um, but um, yeah, they're, they're there to help.